You're listening to the station that's been nominated for a total of 11 awards with the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System, including Best Community College Station for two years in a row. FM. HD. Amazon Echo. Google Home. The TuneIn Radio app. The iHeartRadio app. And nccradio.org. This is 9.3 WHPC. WHPC HD. Garden City. Long Island. New York. FM WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. Welcome to another edition of From the Press Box. I am Rob Leonard. Joining me, of course, is my brother and co-host, Tim Leonard. Hello, Timothy. How are you? Mike, too, brother. How are you, brother? Yeah, it's it's radio, brother, you know. Anyway, uh, welcome aboard. We're here every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., part of the WHPC Sports Talk family, which includes Sports Talk every Monday at 5 p.m., every Tuesday at 5 p.m., every Thursday at 9 p.m., and every Friday at 3 p.m. We also stream on the iHeartRadio app and TuneIn.com, and of course, it all begins somewhere, and that's nccradio.org. Big week in sports, my brother, as there always is, because... Sports is all over the place. It never stops existing. Imagine if it did, brother. Imagine a week. Well, actually, there was a week without sports after 9-11. True. And that was, uh, you know, that was a little uh, depressing. Matter of fact, we were, we were busy with other stuff. Yeah, we were. Actually, they're doing something at the 9-11 Museum. I'd like to actually have those people on about how, um, you know, the week without sports and how it sort of... After, yes. Yeah, when you were part after of that. After 9-11. So, yeah, I was part of that. So I, was, I was covering stuff. I was... I was uh, I mean, just to be quick about it, I was covering uh, a rainout of the Yankees on nine ten. Right. Uh, got, probably got home at about two o'clock in the morning because we had to wait for uh, for the for the actual rainout to be called. And then the next the next day, I'm out in the streets of Manhattan talking to people walking north away from the Trade Center. And then yep. when sports finally did resume, I was at Shea Stadium uh, the, the night that Piazza hit the home run and. I'll, yep. I'll still remember, and I'm 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 never going to forgive. <laughs> I'll uh, let the writer remain nameless, uh, but I'll never forgive our Mets beat writer, who I actually gave him a quote from Chipper Jones, and I was the only one who had this quote. He said, and and I will swear to my dying days that he did say this because it's never been quoted. But Chipper Jones said it was a good thing the Mets won. Yeah, well, it's true. Well, but Chipper Jones saying a good yeah, thing well, to match one. Come he, on, he he he. Chipper Jones. One thing about Chipper Jones, he understands the importance of history and other things. It's not just you know he's a you know, he's I know a great Met fans. Player. Met fans hated him. Yeah, but you know and, what? And gave he, him a lot of grief. Yeah, you know, Met fans hated John Rocker too. But you know well, the Chipper Jones thing was something different. You know, John Rocker was worth hating. Yeah, you know, you know Chipper Jones was like yeah, you know, sort of like a Reggie Miller. You know, in a lot of ways. Yeah, in, in many ways. You know, Reggie Miller is also aware of the history of the Pacers and the and the Knicks, well, and, the, and you you know, know, how he loved to destroy the Chipper. The Chipper Jones was. I mean, the, the Met fans gave him grief, but he was Met killer, like Reggie right. Miller was. They didn't throw so. batteries at him. Like well, they, they did probably for, did, but for Rocker, <laughs> Rocker <laughs> deserved it. Rocker, oh. Rocker, Rocker. You know, Rocker uh, earned their ire by oh by God. insulting them. I Chipper Jones never insulted Met fans. Games, he just beat them. Rob Tuck and I went to. And Rocker comes running out of the bullpen, and you literally see batteries, nine volts going right out. Oh, his I'm head. sure. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, it, was, it was a no good doubt. Day. Good no day doubt. World classy Met fans. That's right. Anyway, let's uh, start off, brother. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, you want to start with NFL? Or you want to start with the Yankees? Let's go NFL. I don't okay. have any problems with that. Oh, look at it. They tightened up the microphone. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, cool. um, okay, let's start with the Cowboys beating the Seahawks because I really thought the Seahawks were going to win that game. So did I. There, there were there was a lot of games that surprised me this weekend. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I didn't think the Cowboys were going to win. Uh, I didn't think the Eagles were going to win, and they probably shouldn't have. Uh, and we, 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 have, we now have a new term, brother, in football. What's that? The double doink. Doink? Doink. Like I, doink I, I, used, I used to call it stoink, but uh, apparently everybody's going with doink today uh, with, the, with the field goal attempt uh, that hit not only the left upright, 
but then hit the crossbar on its way down and bounced back into the field of play. So we're talking if the ball was at a different angle or maybe maybe landed an right. inch an inch deeper, we're talking about the Bears winning this game by the slimmest of margins. Instead, we're talking about the Bears' season being over. So it, it was a crazy. Cody Parkey is the is the Bears kicker, and he actually this was inc- this was pretty incredible. Earlier in the season, I think it was against the Miami Dolphins. Right. Cody Parkey hit and hit the upright four times in one game, which wow. is incredible. That's I don't even know how you do. I mean, think about it. think about it. the upright is, I don't know, maybe a not even a foot wide. I would think. Right, right. He hit it four times. That's unbelievable. That's not, that's not something you plan. <laughs> no, it's not something you want either. He he probably thought he was going to get cut after that game, and Bears fans right now are probably wishing he had been cut after after yesterday. It was funny though. The the uh, the Eagles called the timeout. You know they, that whole thing about icing the kicker, which I can't stand because it's usually ridiculous. And Parkey actually made his kick right. the first the first time, but they, the Eagles had called a timeout, so it didn't matter. But usually kickers will do that because it gives them it gives them a little warm up. It, it lets them all right, yeah, good sure. forty three yards, no problem. He kicked it right through. And on the second attempt, I don't know if 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 it had an impact, but the ball. One of the Eagles players got a finger on it. You could see that the ball, the the ball, it's, it was going end over end, and it it kind of the trajectory stopped the the end over end part. So I don't know if that moved the ball sideways or moved it to to the left as you're facing the goalpost, but obviously it had some sort of an impact right. on the ball. Uh, but I mean, just a crazy way to end the game. Absolutely insane. I mean, just not only to hit the the left upright, and that's bad enough, but then it hit the goalpost too. Yeah, that's uh, very strange. I mean, you feel bad because, as much as you know, it's an end of a game thing, and, and you, I guess, if you're a kick, you almost live for that. You or, have to for the positive side of it, of course. course. Yeah, but you think of guys like you're be the hero, Scott Norwood, who really <laughs> he had the length on the his kick, he didn't have the the, the straightness of it. Well, I mean, you know, that kick was, was what, 48 or something? Yeah, it, was, it was even longer than 40, this one. 47, I think it was. Well, whichever. But, yeah. And that was in conditions that were even more difficult. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, people yeah. people look back at that kick and they say, oh, why didn't you make it? Because the 47 freaking yard kick. Yeah, I no. mean, it's that's not a gimme. No, it's not. You know, if, if you want to blame, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, it bothers me that Norwood got blamed for that so much. But if you want to blame something, blame the Bills. Blame Marv Levy. Blame Jim Kelly. Get the guy another fifteen yards. Yeah, make it a thirty-yard kick, and let's see if he misses it. I mean, that's that's the ridiculous part. The kicker gets or score more points because they they control the game. Well, that's 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 what, that's what yeah. I'm saying. You, so. you can't just put all of that on the kicker. Especially, and, and yesterday it's the same thing with the Bears. They scored fifteen points. Right. That's not enough to win a playoff game. Nope. So now you're putting it all on this guy, and you want him to kick a forty-three-yard field goal. And let's face it, in Chicago yesterday, that was that that was not a. Weather wise, that wasn't nah. uh, that was no picnic. Let's put no. it that way. And the Cowboys beating up on the Seahawks. I well, I, maybe beating up's the wrong term. I thought I thought the Seahawks were going to win. I uh, they, they I was surprised. They played well. I they, was surprised the Seahawks' defense in the fourth quarter and and the way they let the Cowboys move the ball. I, yeah, I, I expected true, yes. more from the Seahawks' defense. And I know I know it's not the Legion of Boom like it used to be. Uh, and and it you know it it's they they've lost some players. But I still expect the Seahawks' defense to be good enough to beat what really is a, a just barely above average Cowboys offense. Right. So that that game was surprising. I didn't expect. I, yeah, I didn't think the Cowboys had a really good season. You know, I, they didn't. I, and and the fact that they made the, the second round now is, you know, kind of shocking to me. But it's very shocking to me <laughs> because I, let's face it, they they were they won ten games, right? Which was a shock in in the first place. Because I don't think that anybody expected them to win that many. I thought I, I think mean, I think most people figured nine, and and the fact that they won the division, I I, I was really thought stunning. you know there was a point where I thought that they just were going to slide out of first place and 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 Washington was going to take over. It didn't happen, but I thought it was. no, not Washington, not after not after. Uh, um, but there was a point, you know. I thought you know, they, they just didn't look the, but the a, Cowboys. After, after Alex Smith the, got hurt, their quarterback situation no, was that, a disaster. That's true. That's true. That, when you when when you when you're forced to to start Mark Sanchez. That, that, that's that's what I knew. All right, Redskins not a playoff team. Well, imagine if he had done well. Yeah, I can't imagine that much. That's 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 really that's you know you're talking about you know like 
forty year olds believing in Santa Claus. That's that's what I'm talking about here. Some people too. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's um, an imagination. Yeah. So anyway, Dallas is going to face the Rams in the NFC fi- uh, semis. Uh, shocking about the Rams, you know? They're, they're, Pretty shocking. Well, you know, they they come back to uh, LA and they've sort of taken over LA a little bit, and um, they played well. You know, that's <laughs> it's what I keep telling you, brother. Yeah. You, know? you get you build a team around a quarterback, and good things will happen. I hope so. Jared Goff has been. A good player for them. Carson Wentz, it, it hasn't gone so well for the Eagles in, in the last, like, I guess two years now. Because right. last year he had uh, the uh, the the uh, uh, shoulder. What was it, shoulder? I think yeah, it was shoulder. Think so. And this year it's he's not, now got a stress fracture in his back or something. So now Nick Foles has got to be the hero again. Yep. So now, now of course, the New York Post is having their knee-jerk hysterical column saying the Giants have to go out and get Nick Foles. Give him whatever he wants, and I was like, well, "He's going to want fifteen million dollars a year." Uh, you know uh, no, what? I, I don't think I don't think he's worth fifteen. But if you were to give him ten, you know, that's you're not, not getting a, him for ten. Well, you're not. If he's going to start, the Eagles will give him ten just yeah, to keep him. But you know, it, you you got to be. If you're him, if you're Nick Foles, you want to say to yourself, "You know what? I want to play." You know how many? You know, last year when, yes he, when no. he go, when he goes to the Super Bowl and wins, you think they would have just said, "Okay, you know what? You're going to be our starting." But they don't do that because they got Carson Wentz. I know That's that. Why. I understand that. You can't but, tell him he's going to be the starter. But at the same time, he's proven himself as a leader on the field. So he's got to say to himself, "I want to. I want to start." And and the Eagles got to say at one point, "Okay, we got to either get rid of him and get something for him, or we got to let him start." Well, I'm pretty sure his contract is up after the season, so they're not going to get anything for him because he's going to be a free agent. Okay. So that that is the issue. Now, the Eagles, in theory, could franchise tag him if they wanted to, but that's going to that's going to make it cost a lot of money. What they need to try to do is see what Nick Foles, see what his his p- possibilities are. I don't think any team is going to give him twenty million a year, but where is that going to go? And could the Eagles pay him enough to make him still want to stay with the team and be a backup and not okay. play? Okay, here's what uh, what the Nick Foles situation is. He has yeah. a mutual option for 2019, and the ball falls. This is off ESPN.com. The right. ball falls in the Eagles' court first. They have the right to extend Foles' contract through 2019 at the price of $20 million. Well, $20 million. They don't want to give him that. Which would be fully guaranteed. Exactly. On the fifth day of the league year. Well, there you go. So wow. that's that's not happening. Wow. That's, I guarantee you that won't that's, happen. That's not happening. All right. Wow. So now they have to figure it out. All right, Nick, we want you to stay. We want you to be the backup to Carson Wentz, which means you probably won't play. Would you do that for, say, four years and $40 million? And that's a lot to pay for a backup quarterback. All right. But the other part of that is Nick Foles gets four years, he gets he gets lottery money, and yep. he gets a very good chance that he won't get hurt because he's not going to play. So but is is your health? He's he's getting the combination of health and money, right? But now, at the same do, time, but does he want does he want to create a legacy for himself? That's the thing. That's, do, you, do you do you go to the NFL to play or just to get a paycheck? You want both. You want to play though. At the same time, you want to make your mark. You want to, of you course. Know, you want to, you know, have people remember you. you know. Well, he's done that though. He won a Super Bowl. I know last that, but year. you that want to do him. it again. Well, yeah, you know, Eli's but, done it twice, and you know he's he's going to the Hall of Fame where, based on those. Two where games. are you going? See, I mean, the thing with Nick Foles is he's kind of in a, in a unique situation because nobody's going to give him twenty million dollars, but a good team that needs a quarterback might give him say fifteen. You know, like, you know where the perfect landing spot for him would be, Jacksonville. Why Jacksonville? Get rid of get rid of Blake Bortles. They already have a good defense. They have a very good defense, as a matter of fact. Okay. They need a quarterback desperately, and there isn't a, a quarterback in the upcoming draft who is so good that a team is is going is going to to give away the farm to get to move up. Like we we talked about this a little bit last week. Dwayne Haskins from from Ohio State is probably the best quarterback in this draft. And if I'm the Giants picking at number six, I don't pick him. He's not that good. So now what do you do? 
You know, this this is why the Giants are going to have Eli again next year because there's there's no dominant quarterback. There's no you know when when uh, when when the kid from Oregon decided he was uh, he was going to to stay in school, he was the best shot at a top quarterback being in this draft. Well, now he's now he's staying. So now you have guys who are maybe late first round or early second round. It's it basically it's what the, what Geno Smith was when he was coming out. Right, Geno turned into a disaster. But I, I mean, I'm going to say Dwayne Haskins will have a better NFL career than Geno Smith. I'm going out on that limb, brother. That's a tough. Uh, that's a, it's a mighty oak of a limb. I'm telling you. That's a that's a tough one, brother. <laughs> I'm shocked you're doing that. But right now, where the Giants are, there isn't you know there isn't that guy for them. So Eli will be back next season. But the the the, the Jaguars are desperately looking to make a change at quarterback, and if they could get Nick Foles to take. Somewhere like in a four year, sixty million dollar range, that would be huge for them. It wouldn't. Huge. It wouldn't. I, mean, I don't know. I think you trade him and get something. You know, I you think. can't trade him. They, for them to trade him, he, they're going to have to sign him to that twenty million dollar deal, and that makes it harder to trade him. That means you get a sixth round pick for him because nobody's going to want to pay the twenty million. But then they're going to be on the hook for it. Yeah. It's not like baseball where you can say, "Oh, all right, well we got him for twenty million. We'll pay eight of it, and you can take him for twelve. It doesn't work like that in the NFL. So. It, it's completely different. If you if you got if you sign the guy for twenty, whoever takes him has to pay the twenty. Okay, that's not right, but that's something else. Anyway, we're gonna take a break right now. You're listening to from the press box right here on ninety point three WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. I'm Rob Leonard. He's Tim Leonard. Tim, you're on Twitter at. At Real Tim Leonard. All hit music. For all those songs radio has forgotten about, join me, Big Ed, Mondays from 10 a.m. till noon for the Good Gold Show. We'll bring back all the great hits of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and more. The sounds of doo-wop to disco, all the Motown soul and great rock and roll. We'll even take your requests and dedications to the Good Gold Show. Music. On the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC and streaming on the iHeartRadio app. What color do you think of when you think of winter? White, like snow. Okay, sure, but I think of red. Well, green and red, like Christmas colors. Nope, just red. Why is that? Because it's almost time for the Nassau Community College New York Blood Center and Long Island Blood Service's 24th annual Midwinter Blood Drive. It's happening Thursday, January 24th from 9 to 5 in the CCB on the Nassau Community College campus. Gain the warm feeling from helping to save a life or two. More information is available by calling 516-572-7401 or online at ncc.edu. It's now easier to listen to the voice of Nassau Community College on your phone. Stay connected to your favorite radio station anywhere you go on the iHeartRadio app. Never miss shows like the Nassau Morning Madhouse, It's Saucy, or the Radio Rumble again. Streaming 24-7, 365. Listen to WHPC everywhere. iHeartRadio is radio and unlimited music all in one app. Listen live now in the iHeartRadio app and at iHeartRadio.com. Just search for 90.3 WHPC. Hi, this is Mike Peters of The Alarm, and you're listening to From the Press Box with Rob and Tim Leonard on 90.3 FM WHPC. I hope you're going to talk a lot about Manchester United FC. You're listening to 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. The alarm there with the deceiver song. It's a major thing for my brother. The mustard deceiver. Yes, it's a very valuable thing in the rare. alarm collector. Extraordinarily rare. And Tim holy has grail. one of them, and it's all autographed. Holy grail. It's a holy grail, 50 copies. Timmy has one of them. And hopefully he never has to sell it on eBay or something. Dave Sharp, Dave Sharp wrote, wrote on it, do not eBay. <laughs> I, have to, I have to honor Dave Sharp. Of course you do. Never put it on eBay. Also, brother, even though it's uh, not technically sports, sports entertainment lost someone last week. Uh, mean Gene Okerlund, just uh, one of the great announcers of anything. You can learn so much from just listening to him announce. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, he was great. He was a great setup guy. Okay. Him and Jesse. Uh, Jesse. Well, was he with Jesse? I think he was yeah. with Jesse. But he, he Jesse the with, body. And uh, the brain. Bobby the brain, of course. Wow. So. 
You didn't, you didn't have to do much to set up Bobby the Brain. All no, you had to do was say, "Hi, hey, Bobby." Hey, hey, Bobby. You say, <laughs> and, and and then you know challenges his his smartness. But uh, yeah, Mean Gene uh, passed. Uh, you know, it's sports entertainment. You How know, old was Mean Gene? Brother? He was like in the seventies. Seventy nine, maybe. Nah, I thought I, I thought I read that somewhere. But uh, he he's, he was around for a long time with the WWE, WWF. I just like listening to him. He was a he, he had he was also a guitar player. He was a bass really? guitar player. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah, he was in a band in like the fifties. I remember when they in the eighties when they did like the entertainment side of wrestling before it became WWE. Right. You see, uh, you see the Hulk playing uh, the bass. And you I see thought the, all that was fake. No, I guess it wasn't. And and, and then you see like me and Gene. I think he's playing the piano. Or, or did something. he ever play with Elvis? No, no. I don't know. Figure it out, yes. So anyway, he uh, he passed along, and uh, I always liked listening to him as as a, as an announcer. Anyway, brother, what else we can we talk about quickly about the football? <sighs> Well, Colts, I mean, there's a couple other games. Uh, you know, we right, had uh, uh, Colts defeated the Texans twenty-one to seven. Texans were never in that game. The Colts co- scored early. They scored often. They took a 21, 21 nothing lead, and it took Deshaun Watson forever to get going. I, I was disappointed in that game because I really thought, uh, as as well as the Texans have played, uh, since they, both of these teams had had not so good starts, and the Colts actually were one in five. The Colts were where the Giants were, right? And then they won. I think it was nine out of ten, and 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 got to the playoffs. And I'll tell you what, that's a dangerous team. Both both of these. I, w- I was going to bring this up later, but both the Colts and the Chargers. I could see both AFC wild card teams beating the number one and two seeds because you're you're going to have the Colts against Kansas City Chiefs, right? And anybody who watches football knows that the Chiefs, yes, they had a great season, but they kind of struggled a bit down the stretch. I don't know if it was because their record was so good and they started to get disinterested, or did the player suspension if impact them? They're you know they they don't have the weapons as many weapons as they did, and. I don't know. Patrick Patrick Mahomes wasn't quite as dominant as he was earlier in the season. Like from week maybe three to about week nine, Patrick Mahomes seemed like he was throwing four touchdowns every game. Oh yeah, he's and he's doing great. More recently, it's been two or three, which is I, I'm not sneezing at it. I'm not I'm not looking down my nose at it. But he hasn't been as dominant, and the Chiefs' defense has been porous all season. So you're talking about a situation where the Colts, who are playing very well, and Andrew Luck is, 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 has been outstanding and, and, and clearly is fully back after sitting out all of last season, the Colts, to me, are a team that could beat the Chiefs. And you look at, you look at the Chargers, who finished with the same 12-4 and record as the Chiefs did, but they wind up as a wild card team because you can't have two division champions. Right. So the Chiefs win the division on a tiebreaker, and you have the team with the second best record in the AFC as a wild card team. So now they're going to have to go to New England, and, and let's face it, New England they didn't they weren't very good down the stretch either, and they have they have I, I said I said this I don't know, probably about a month ago I think they're done. I genuinely think I, they're done. I, think I, the, I don't. I, I don't think the cracks in the system are starting to show a little more. Nothing right. about that team frightens me. Not this Tom year. Brady has been ordinary. Not this year. Gronk has been a bum. Well, they don't really have a receiving threat. Their offense. Their offense is, is only pretty good, and and it, it, it's it's because of the system that they run that I've said more than once. I, I don't know why more teams don't copy it, but I I, I just <clears throat> Philip Rivers. Right now, to me, is a better quarterback than Tom Brady. And I know Patriots fans will scream, oh, he's the goat. (laughs) No. Right now, Tom Brady's old. And and I I don't see the Patriots defense being able to stop Phillip Brady. And despite his workout regimen, which is pretty strong regimen. Hey, all the respect to the guy. He's 40. He's 40 or 41 or whatever he is. All the respect in the world to him for, for still being out there and still being effective. But if he was in another system, he wouldn't be. If Tom Brady played for the Giants, he'd probably after after this season he'd probably want to retire because he would have got killed like Eli got killed. Well, yeah. So, you know, the, the, Tom Brady the pay- is forty one. Will 41. be forty two, August third. There you go. So, so he this is his last year, I think. No, 
You don't think he, so? he wants to play until he's like 45. He's not George Blanda, though. Well, he, he keeps talking about playing. George, and George Blanda was a kicker well, at the end. But like I said, he keeps talking about not, not about playing one more year. He keeps talking about playing multiple years. He has no retirement date in mind. He's not even thinking about that this is his last season. Not even considering it. So, okay, and that's well, all because of the workout regimen and his his fitness guru and you know the guy that Bill Belichick hates uh, and and that has caused a lot of friction in in the uh, in the Patriots uh, uh, compound. Let's call it. So there are issues there, but it, it could wind up being Belichick's decision as much as Brady's. Because I don't know what Brady's contract situation is. He, he's a guy, and he's a guy who, who has done it the right way because he can afford to do it the right way, but he hasn't bankrupted the Patriots or, or, or killed their salary cap because he, he's told them, oh, I want $25 million like, like, you know, like every other top quarterback in the league. I don't know what Brady's making. It's probably around $15 million or so. But that sacrifice by him has allowed them to be able to spend more money and and somebody I forget who it was, but somebody did a a, a, a a stat where they took some of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league, and most of their teams didn't make the playoffs. Right. Aaron Rodgers didn't make the playoffs. Eli Manning didn't make the playoffs. All of these guys who their cap hit is over twenty million dollars. The majority of them did not make the playoffs. So either NFL teams have to figure something out, or quarterbacks just need to start being less greedy. Well, that's and I know I they get that. hit, and I know they get beat up, and I know it's the most important position on the field. But if you don't have any money left over to put a team around you, you know, have fun being seven and nine. Well, you don't want that. By the way, the oldest starting quarterback ever in the NFL. Oh, my brother's doing stats today. Look at him, Steve Deberg. Steve Deberg. Blander was the oldest player. He went okay. to forty nine or forty eight, but he didn't start as a quarterback. Though I do remember he came in a couple of times. Yeah, for a state he, he was the backup. Monica. Yeah, he was the backup. So. Um, but it was Steve DeBerg. How old was he, does it say? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Uh, it just says that he was the oldest guy. All right, well. So. He probably was with Tampa Bay when he did that. Probably. So anyway, um, you know, well, maybe th- maybe you shouldn't have to pay the quarterback $20 million. You have to. That, that's why I keep telling you with the Jets that there is a window with Sam Darnold. Because right now he is cost effective. And this is why I keep telling you, you have to build around a quarterback. Because by the time the quarterback is good and he, he learns the league and, and he can you know really play to the best of his ability, then you're going to have to get other guys. And, and this is why I'm saying that even if the Giants picked a quarterback this year, he's not going to be ready until 2020. And by then, Saquon Barkley and, uh, and Odell Beckham Jr. are going to be on year three of their five-year deals. Okay, so well, the window is going to shrink. I agree. By the way, just to, to make it, you know, it's pretty close. DeBerg was, I found the, the notes, 44 years and 279 days. That's old. V- uh, Warren Moon was 44 years and eight days. Warren Moon was good, though. Vinny from, Elmont, Vinny from Elmont was 44 years and 26 days for the Panthers. That's Vinny Testaverde. Yeah, I know that. And uh, DeBerg started for the uh, Falcons. Some, right now, there's some guy, Vinny, from Elmont listening to this. Day. I didn't play quarterback. Come on. That was, like, that was the ongoing uh, line, you know, Vinny from Elmont. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, so get, get back to the games, brother. Chargers beat the Ravens. Okay. I have – it's rare that you'll see as bad a performance as Lamar Jackson put on yesterday for three quarters. And then Lamar Jackson, after the, after the Chargers took a 23-3 to lead – all of a sudden, Lamar Jackson turned into Terry Bradshaw. I don't know what happened, how it happened. After three quarters, or in that vicinity, Lamar Jackson had minus two passing yards in the game. That's not good. No, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very, very sage assessment, brother. Thank you. Uh, but then Lamar Jackson started throwing touchdowns in the fourth quarter. And the Ravens got two touchdowns. The Chargers forgot how to move the ball, and and they also were dealing with the uh, with uh, an injury to uh, Melvin Gordon, who right. who uh, rolled an ankle or, or did something to his. Or actually, no, it was his knee, um, and they couldn't they couldn't move the ball. So then it turned into twenty three seventeen, and the Ravens got the ball back with uh, I, I think it was a little over a minute or a little a little under a minute, and I'm thinking, you know what, the Ravens got a shot to win this game. 
Lamar Jackson first throw was went for about 14 yards. They're ready to move, and then um, one of the San Diego defenders came in. Jackson was about to throw a pass, and the guy just batted the ball out of his hands. And one thing I found out in this game, Lamar Jackson has hands about the size of Donald Trump. <laughs> he loses the ball. He he was there was one play where he went to went to scramble and he just dropped the ball. You can't drop the ball. It's it's the most important thing on the field. You can't just drop it. Sure. And that's because he has small hands. The the the, the Ravens three of their first eight plays were fumbles. Jackson fumbled twice, and and one of the running backs fumbled. It was unbelievable the way they just kept putting the ball on the ground. I'm like, what are you doing? They 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 gave away one of them. They recovered two of them, but it was sloppy. It was it was horrible, and it was like, wait a minute, you're in the playoffs. What are you doing? But fourth quarter, they almost pulled it out. It would have been a, it would have been such a miracle. But Chargers defense was outstanding. I think they'll be outstanding next week against the Patriots. And and for anybody out there who who might like to uh, you know make a wager on a game. I'm going with both on both both wild card teams in the AFC. Get as many points as you can. You know, just it, don't bet crazy. Just a little bit, a little taste. Oh, well, you know, you know, you could have a situation where Los Angeles, you know, could have both teams in the that would be sick su- Super Bowl. It would be sick, especially it would, it would since be, they're it'd be a lot know, of fun trying to reestablish Los Angeles as a football. Where town. is the Super Bowl this year? I don't even know. Check that out, brother. Check, check that, that out. On, check that on the computer. Let's take a break. I think it's. I want to say Atlanta, but I'm not sure. Well, let's take a break. We'll, when we come back, we'll. All right. Look. We'll down. let people know. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. You're listening to Sports Talk. I'm sorry. You're listening what? to from the press box. In the what? Box. Part of the Sports Talk family, right here on ninety point three WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. Okay. Let's go. Tell your friends about the Nassau Morning Madhouse. Hear what you're missing. Check it out. Check it out. These revamps of these TV shows that came out, like, for instance, Fuller House. Fuller no. House stinks. You I mean, don't I've, like I've it? I've watched a bunch of episodes of it just because I really like Full House. They focus too much on the newer kids. I'd rather it be about Danny, uh, Joey, Jesse, and I don't want to know about DJ's kids. I think they stink as actors. What? Yeah. No, 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 I, no, no, I, no. I don't think so. Kill, kill off the original kids. Have it be about Danny no. and all that, raising the new kids. Uh, oh, oh, my God. First off, you're an awful director. There's something going on in your mind that I don't <laughs> like. Oh, just kill off DJ Stephanie. It's a and TV Kenny. show. It's not like I'm bringing the actors out back. How are you going to kill them off? What are you going to do? I don't know, car accident. Accident. They go off the side of the Golden Gate. <laughs> I would hate. Everywhere. I would... <laughs> Nassau Morning Madhouse. Weekday mornings from 7 to 9. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHPC. A Super Bowl champion. U.S. congressman. Publisher of Long Island Business News. Award-winning authors. Physical fitness, life coach, and celebrities like Billy Crystal and Eddie Murphy. I had no idea so many awesome people got their start at Nassau Community College. Well, they're always saying that NCC is where success stories begin. With people like that as graduates, it must be true. Hello, I'm Dr. Linda Nadian. And I'm Aurora Workman, the president of Nassau Community College Alumni Association. Together, we're the hosts of Lion Tales, a show that highlights proud graduates of Nassau Community College. Join us each week when distinguished alumni stop by to share stories, laugh a little, and remind us what things were like when they were students at Nassau Community College. My fabulous friend Linda and I will also share the latest alumni news and updates, so tune in Tuesdays at 4 p.m. to the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC, or listen online with the iHeartRadio app. Success. Noun. The fact of getting or receiving wealth, respect, or fame. Succeed, verb, to do what you are trying to do. Success story, noun, a successful person or thing, such as someone or something that has achieved a goal. Hi, I'm Bill Horan, the host of The Secrets of Success, and I invite you to do more than just read a dictionary to learn about success. If you want to achieve your goals in life, listen to the tips, secrets, strategies, and habits of some of the world's most successful people and hear about the obstacles they had to overcome to attain their dreams. Start your own journey to success. Tune in to The Secrets of Success Wednesday afternoons at 4 and Sunday mornings at 7.30 on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. 90.3 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. On your radio right now, or your listening device, is from the press box. 
I am Rob Leonard. My co-host is my brother and award-winning sports writer, Tim Leonard. As we talk sports every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., it becomes a podcast later on on Spreaker and iHeartRadio and uh, iTunes. So if you miss it or if you want to listen to it again or whatever, or you want to tell your friends about it, whatever. We're everywhere. We're, we're everywhere where there's, there's a podcast. So uh, it goes up usually the day of. You can listen and you, you can say, wait a minute, did he say what? Yeah. And you can go listen to it again. Yeah, something like that. So, so anyway, uh, welcome back. By the way, the 2019 Super Bowl will be at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. In Atlanta. In Atlanta, Georgia. Just like I said. So, um, I never really look at that until deeper in the playoffs. Well, you, you know because what it's like it's, it's it's almost unimportant to me where the where the Super Bowl. No, is. you're right. And, I'm not going. And you know what they're doing this? You know year? what the Super Bowl is for me? Bob Tuck's house. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> you know, you know. Um, I agree because you know it's a good. That's it's where I'm going. Be, that's where, that's where I'll be. The thing that gets me though is um, this year I noticed the NFL like doing like little giveaways to like to normal people, to regular people. Like yesterday uh, during the game on uh, Saturday, they. Um, was it Roger Goodell went to someone's house as a really big Cowboys fan, I think it was. I didn't see it. And, and gave him two tickets to, to, the Super Bowl? to the Super Bowl. Wow. Now Surprised Roger Goodell's given anything away. <laughs> yeah, well, but I think what they're trying to do is it's gotten to the point with the Super Bowl where the only people who can afford it are really, really rich people. Mm-hmm. And it's become this party where- it's corporations. It's a corporate party where we're not invited. It's a business function, the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, and, and it's become a tax write-off too, mm-hmm. which is- Something I wish they'd look into more. It would change, real, real change fans, sports. Real fans can't go to the Super Bowl. No. Because, first of all, real fans barely get any tickets. Well, that's true, so too. So that's, that's the big part of it. But the ones who do get the tickets, they're so absurdly priced. Oh, God. It's not even worth it. it. it, it you know, Joe Sixpack, Joe the Plumber, whoever, he can't afford it. Neither can we. <laughs> I can't. I know that. We, we, we don't have a six-pack or a plumber. We can't afford it We either. need to get media credentials. That's what we need to do. That's the only way. But then don't they put you in another room now? Isn't it gotten to the point where they, they throw you? I don't even know. They even throw you in the stadium. I, I don't even know where they're, putting, where they're putting the media now. You know, it, it, I mean, it's the big. I mean, when you have, like, stupid people there during the week, like from entertainment shows, mm-hmm. asking dumb questions to players. Well, and, they have Radio Row and, and Well, it's Radio Row, TV but then, like, and whatnot, you know, and... Access Hollywood shouldn't be there. No, they shouldn't And neither be. should Entertainment Tonight or any of those others. But they think they should be. Yes, of course. You know, so I... That, that's where the stories are. Yeah, well, that, that's what, where it becomes, you know, the, more than a game, where it becomes this entertainment thing. Mm-hmm. And it just bothers me tremendously. Well, you're not the only one, brother. I'm with you on that. I, I would like to go there. I, I remember there was a story that SI did many years ago. It was about a guy who sneaks in every year to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And he even, he, he gets in every year. And no matter Very what. Very industrious, matter fact, he, wasn't he on the, I think he was on the field with Tom Landry. He was, he was one of the guys lifting him up one year. Maybe. I think that was Anything what, is possible. And, uh, but every year he gets in. Even he, though he, he, even touched, though the, he touched Tom Landry's overcoat, <laughs> even though you know you you have this whole double layer of security, somehow he keeps getting in. So that that yeah. would be a cool. It's a good thing, it's good thing he's not a terrorist. Yeah, well, he's all a, I have to he say. He just wants to see the game. So they were giving away tickets to the diehard fans. It wasn't just this guy that doing it. I think they said they were giving away fifty pairs or twenty five pairs, which isn't a lot. Probably twenty five. Yeah, but you know, Let, let's not get crazy with the NFL. Yeah, you know, they, I mean, those tickets are, are like I said, they're. A thousand plus for for a Super Bowl. Oh, ticket. at least, at least, at least. So it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy for one game, and 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 the fact that they, that anybody is ever printing a four figure sum on a ticket for anything yeah, is insane. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, brother, let's let's get into let's get into Yankees, uh, some baseball. Let's get into the Yankees, brother. You, you, they, 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 we got uh, a lot more to talk about. They got, they did some uh, moves this week. No no Manny Machado yet. Moving and grooving. But uh, I don't expect the Yankees to sign Machado now. I really thought they would have done it last week if they were going to no. do it. Manny Machado, I uh, but, think, will probably he's... sign this week. That That's the timetable he was talking about um, before the end of the year. He said he was probably going to sign somewhere in that like January 10th, around, around there. He was talking first or second week in January. So I think he will sign this week. Uh, I really don't know what they're waiting for, because at this point, there are three finalists, and those finalists being the, the Philadelphia Phillies, Chicago White Sox, and New York Yankees. Now, I've said this before, I'll say it again. The Yankees are not going to give Manny Machado 10 years. They're not going to give him $300 million. The Yankees will only sign Manny Machado if 
Machado says, all right, Yankees, I will accept your terms. Because the Yankees, first of all, I don't think they're going to give him more than seven seven years, eight at the absolute most. That takes him into into his age 34 season. Uh, I, I, he wants he wants 10 or 12 years. The Yankees aren't going that far. So and and I think I think money wise, I think that they're going to say, look, we're not giving you 35 million a year or whatever it is. I think the Yankees would be comfortable with a, a, a contract that's somewhere around the eight years and maybe 240 or 250 million. And I think the Phillies will give him more. That being said, from what Manny Machado has said or indicated, I don't think he wants to play for the Phillies. So is he going to say, look, New York is where I want to be. I want to be a Yankee, and let's make this work. Or is he going to say, well, you know, I want what I want, and I want the team that I want. And Brian Cashman's going to say, yeah, you know what, we're done. So go go play in Philly or go go lose for three years in Chicago before that team is going to be any good. Maybe two, but all right. But still, he's going to his first couple of years in Chicago would be a waste because he's going to lose ninety games. And that that's where we are with Manny Machado. He is he. The Yankees are not going to bid against themselves. They're not going to get into a bidding war. I'm sure that they have a figure in mind that they would say, all right, you know what? For this number, we'll we'll go in on Manny Machado. But otherwise, it's about no. the years. It's about the years. I don't think it, it's well, the it's number. It's, it's about it's the years and the money. I, it's, it's I about think both. It's more, I think it's more about the years than anything else. Well, like I said, I don't. I don't. I doubt it's the Yankees want to give him more than seven. It's why they didn't sign Robinson Cano. You know? Well, but the, the the number for Cano was insane because not only did the Mariners offer three more years than the Yankees were willing to go, but they also offered it was something like more than sixty million. The, the offer that the Mariners made was was so absurdly. But the, huge. But the Yankees, for their contract, was almost equal per year what the, the, the Mariners were. Well, but the Mariners gave them three more years. Yeah, and, that's, and, why. that's uh, why. The Yankees were, were, I think they were willing to do, it was somewhere around, it's like seven years for, I think it was 160 or $170 million. And then, the, and then the Mariners came in and said, we'll give you 10 years and $240 million. Right, right. It was insane. It is insane. Who were they bidding against? Uh, not me. <laughs> well, that's my point. You, but, know, you, have, you, have, you, can't just, you can't just put a huge number out there. It, what, what's the point in just handing over money? Well, they end up doing it anyway. Well, but of course, of course, Cano is going to say, "Well, how, how do I turn that down for the extra sixty million dollars? Sixty million dollars." I know, but he would have won another World Series ring or a World wow. Series ring at least. I don't know. Did he win one with the Yankees? Two thousand nine, the Yankees won. Yeah, he was there with two thousand. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. It's two thousand nineteen. He hasn't been there ten years. Okay, I'm thinking. Okay, I, th- mm-hmm. I wasn't sure he was there in two thousand nine. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I all I know is is that. Like I said, I think sometimes it's better as a player to be on a better team and take less money because you know what? Is there a real difference? I mean, there is a difference between two hundred and two hundred forty million dollars. But I don't think there is. Well, I don't either. I don't. I don't to me, I'd I rather spend all that money. I, I agree, but I would also be like, okay, well, I if 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 I get two hundred million, but I'm going to go to the World Series and I have a chance on a, on a winning team. Give me the two hundred. That's say, say Give me the two hundred, and I'll, I'll I'll take that ring, and I'll wear that the rest of my life. That's right. That's in fact. Maybe I'll get more than one, and I'll have one for each hand. Yeah, you know, you'd be like Jeter. No, Jeter's got five. Yeah, you know, or, or Yogi has. You know, Yogi's got ten. Yogi's got one for every finger on his body. That's right. Including, so, including one for the Mets. So, but what the Yankees did do this week, and I generally love, I genuinely love this move. They signed Troy Tulowitzki to a one-year deal. For the league minimum, brother, and that is five hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars. I love this move. Why do you love this move, brother? Because Troy Tulowitzki is a player, and and up until two years ago, he was an outstanding player. He was an All-Star caliber player. All right, he had surgery. He had the surgery that that Yoannis Cespedes had last summer. Right. Uh, except he had it more than a year ago. He he didn't play at all last season. And because his he he was healing from bone spur surgery on his heels, both of them. Troy Tulowitzki, when he's healthy, he's only thirty four years old. He's still a productive bat, and he's one of the best defensive shortstops ever. He's, he's got a nine eighty nine eighty five fielding percentage, which for a shortstop is phenomenal. All right, so the Yankees sign him. Toronto oh, still owes him thirty eight million dollars over the next two years. And that's because they had him. They had him on on a long term contract. Now, why would if you're the 
Blue Jays, would you give up that contract and and the whole thing? Why would you just give up? Because on it? they have a prospect by the name of Vladimir Guerrero, who you might have heard of. His father is a Hall of Famer, so he is Vlad Guerrero Jr., who was a shortstop. Okay, Tulo was blocking him. They don't want him to be blocked anymore. So goodbye, Can't Tulo. Make a trade or something? I, nobody would have taken his money, and especially coming off major surgery like that. So they said, "All right, you know what? We're done." Thanks, we'll pay you the money. I don't know if they worked out any sort of a buyout with him, but they're on the hook for those two years at $19 million a year. So when when the Blue Jays released Tulowitzki, I, the first thing I said was, you know what, that would be really good if the Yankees could get him. Because obviously they were looking for a shortstop cause it was with Didi out for at least, at least half a year. And to get this guy for the league minimum, it, it's, it's such a, such a, a no-lose proposition. Because you're going to go to spring training. If for whatever reason he shows in spring training that he can't play and, and that he's not back, and, and to preface that, he's already done two workouts for the Yankees, and they obviously like what they saw, otherwise they wouldn't have signed him. Sure. But let's just say he, he's a disaster in spring training or he tears an ACL or whatever. Well, the Yankees are on the hook for half a million dollars. Which, let's face it, for, for, a cali- not a bad thing. for the caliber of player he is, I'll take that risk every day and, and twice on Sunday, as the saying goes. I agree. Now, Tulowitzki, his last full season, first of all, he's a 290 career hitter. All right. His last full season with the Blue Jays, it was 131 games. Right. Almost 500 at bats. He batted 254, 24 home runs, 79 RBIs in 131 games. Those are, those are nice numbers. Not bad. Those are, those are basically DD numbers. Close enough. So. With the bat, I'm confident enough that this guy will be able to to find his groove again and get back in it. He wanted a place where he could go where he would get regular bats. Now, if the Yankees sign Machado, this is this is as much as this signing doesn't have anything to do with Manny Machado, because the Yankees have said that you know, we could still go out and get him. Right, right. But if if Brian Cashman said as of today, Tulowitzki's our starting shortstop. Now, if they decide to bring in Machado. I think Machado will go right to third base. So we can say that it doesn't have anything to do with Machado, but it has a little tiny, little, little, little tiny bit. Well, it says because, to Machado that you're going to play third base. Well, but Machado sa- has said he wants to play short. Well. Too bad. A-Rod wanted to play short, too, but you don't play uh, short when Derek Jeter's there. Exactly. You know? Exactly, brother. So. Thank you. <laughs> so we can say that it doesn't have anything to do, and the Yankees can still go after Machado, and et cetera, et cetera. But if Machado comes to the Yankees, it's going to be to play third base. Because the Yankees didn't sign Tulowitzki to leave him on the bench and tell him, all right, you're going to be our, our you know, fill-in at the infield. That's not going to happen. Manning's not signing with the Yankees. I don't think he is. I mean, I, I really don't think he is, and, and that doesn't bother me one bit. Because when I, Didi comes back, if Tulo's doing well, they move him to third. I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't know what they'll do with Tulo. I mean, let's put it this way. If if Tulo's doing well when Didi comes back, first of all, they, they, it, it allows them to let Didi take his time coming back, which is a good thing. You want the guy to be fully healthy. You know, it's not like with a pitcher, it takes a year for Tommy John surgery. With a position player, it takes about half a year right. because they don't have to worry about, about ramping up their, their velocity. Sure. And let's face it, if a shortstop, he th- he's throwing the ball at first base. There, there's a pretty wide window that he can throw to. With a pitcher, he's got to throw strikes, and he's got to be able to, to locate and pinpoint where he's throwing the ball. So that takes time to build up. So, But with Didi, they're, they're talking anywhere from June to August. They really have no clue when he's coming back. When you're talking about a two-month window for a player to return from an injury, that means you don't know. Sure. So if, if, if Tulowitzki comes in, plays well, well, now the Yankees are, all right, Didi, take your time. No reason to rush. We're good. You know, we want you to be fully healthy when you come back and ready, ready to contribute to, to, a, to a playoff run here. So what would happen then, I assume, is the Yankees probably would try to trade Tulowitzki and see what, you know, see what they need and what they could get. Because I don't, I don't know what the situation is for him next year. As far as I know, the Blue, the Blue Jays would still owe him the $19 million. And he'd be able to sign with another team, but would he want to sign with somebody who traded for him? I think that would probably probably be a condition of the trade. So, you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts here. 
Yeah, and you know, we'll, like we'll, we'll, it sounds like a good safe deal it, for the it's, Yankees. It's a great deal for the Yankees. You know, Brian Cashman, just what a, what a phenomenal job by him to 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 work this out. And Tulowitzki grew up idolizing Derek Jeter. That's why he wore number two with the Rockies. Uh, he, he's he has said in the past that he wanted to play for the Yankees. So now is the time. You know, I don't know who else was interested in him or what kind of money they were offering. But now was the perfect time, and you know, plus with the Yankees having the vacancy at shortstop with with Didi down, you know, all all uh, all all these all these things collided and and formed the perfect situation for for Tulowitzki to come to New York. Now, obviously, he can't wear number two because it's retired. Right. I'm I'm wondering 22. if he wants. Well, Ellsbury has twenty two. Okay. Which you know, he's a guy that the Yankees really need to work on trading as well, and <laughs> that hasn't been talked about like Sonny Gray has been talked about. But it would be nice if they could unload him on somebody and, and eat some of that contract and, and you know see what they can do. They certainly don't need him. But, yeah, two, right now Ellsbury is 22, and I don't know. It would it would cost Tulowitzki uh, probably a decent chunk of money or, or a nice watch or something like that yeah, to get nice that gift. number. Yeah, yeah, that's how you – know, you want to take my number? Sure, it's uh, – it costs you this much. I want, I want a steak dinner every week. Uh, more than that. Well, by the way, brother, I, I did a little look up here on the NFL on-location experience site. Ooh. Um, ticket prices, starting ticket prices for the official Super Bowl 53 ticket packages. Oh, I can't wait. Which you get an official Super Bowl game ticket. And you get an all-inclusive pregame party. It's all-inclusive. $3,300 for one ticket. Wait, you got a party and what else? A ticket. Party and a ticket. That's, that's, that's incredible. That's got to be a hell of a party. <laughs> it better be. I mean, what do they give you? Like, a, oh, here, here's some chips and a and a cracker and and oh, by the way, and, here and and and, 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 a, a, and a and a Bud Light. <laughs> yeah, you, you see, you see the the tap on the beer over there. Just take it from there. You know, you mean I can't get a can? No, 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 no cans. So, Only oh. so that's ridiculous. All right. Anyway, back to baseball, brother. We got we got only got a few minutes left. Uh, the Yankees also uh, did a bit of business, uh, signing Zach Britton to a three-year, thirty-nine million dollar contract. That's guaranteed. Okay. There's also an option uh, for it's a both team option that could make the, the contract four years four, and fifty-three million dollars. Uh, Britton had a, a, one of the most ridiculous ground ball rates you're ever going to hear: seventy-seven point eight. Okay. After after his uh, deal from the Orioles to the Yankees last season, that's that's unbelievable. I still don't think he was all that good last year, and and I'm hoping that this isn't an overpay. This is a guy who had has had some injury issues, including an Achilles. Uh, that it's a little, you know that's a difficult injury to come back for, especially a pitcher and especially a power pitcher. But I I wasn't overly impressed last year with him after the Yankees got him, even though he did put up some decent numbers, but. He he seemed to pitch in trouble a lot, and you know we'll see what happens. Right now, though, the Yankees are putting together another one of these Super Bowl pens, I, you know, and, and they're talking. They're still talking about the possibility of bringing in bringing in Adam Ottavino, who was outstanding for the Rockies last year and is a New York City native, which you know, can only be a good thing. And grew up a Yankees fan, but right now the Yankees bullpen, it's absurd. They have Aralis Chapman, Dellen Betances. Zach Britton, Chad Green. If you bring in Ottavino, that's five closers as far as I'm concerned. Do you need five? Plus you have Jonathan Holder who had a very good season last year and, and Tommy Canely who was hurt a lot of last year. And if he comes back healthy, is another guy who throws 98. So where where's the guy that, that is like the mop-up guy who you put in for the loss or something? That's seven guys, all of whom throw at least 97. Well, you need you need a mop up guy. Yeah, know? but they they won't have any. <laughs> they, they'll have they'll have two sets of three relievers who who, who uh, Aaron Boone can run out there every night. You you can run out uh, Green, Batances, and Chapman one night, and and then go. Uh, you know, if they sign Ottavino, you got Holder, Ottavino, and, and Britton the next night. And but they're never going to do it that way because Chapman is the closer. Right. right. But here's what I think they're doing. Chapman can opt out of his contract after next season. So if he does that and he says, oh, I want more money, he's already the highest paid closer in baseball. But if he says that, the Yankees will probably say, hey, you know what, we got Zach Britton. We don't need you. Take a walk. Plus, I don't think because the, the, the uh, their um, arbitration hearings have been contentious in the past, 
I don't think that the Yankees are going to re-sign Dallin Betances. I don't think they trust him. He, he's he's wild. He's he's you know he has his control issues, and I don't think the Yankees are going to pay to keep him. Although I wish they would, but and and there's been uh, you know like I said contentious. Uh, Randy Levine had some uh, some not, not nice words to say about him after after the arbitration hearing two years ago, uh, and, and it, it raised some some Wasn't he red supposed flags. To leave the team? Yeah, I wish he would. <laughs> but so that I think is why they're building such a such a super bullpen is because I think they they think there are going to be defections in the next year or two, and and they're they're safeguarding against that. So they'll they'll be all right if somebody like Chapman or somebody like Batanzas leaves. Because they'll already have that kind of depth in place, so you know, it, it, good move for the Yankees. And like I said, Adovino, we'll see what happens. But apparently, the Yankees are still very actively pursuing him. Um, over to the Mets, the one move the Mets made that I find intriguing: they acquired Keon Broxton from the Milwaukee Brewers. Right, uh, and Broxton and a minor leaguer for for reliever Bobby Wall. I don't know who that is, and two minor leaguers. But apparently, Bobby Wall pitched a little bit for the Mets last season. Keon Broxton two years ago hit twenty one home or twenty home runs and stole twenty one bases. Last season was a disaster for him. He hit like one eighty with like four home runs and eleven RBIs. But this is a guy who has a power speed combo and is still young enough that if he taps into the kind of player he was two years ago, then the Mets have gotten a steal. He he'd be better than Juan Lagares in center field. He's a very obviously a very fast guy. A uh, good defender in center field. My only issue with him, his batting average has never been good. The highest he ever hit was two forty two, and that was in something like 250 at-bats in his second year in pro ball. Um, like I said, last year he batted about 180, and, and the, even the year that he hit uh, he hit the 20 home runs, he only batted two twenty. So he's not he's not he's certainly not a leadoff guy despite his speed, but he's a guy – who could bring a dimension to the Mets that they don't necessarily have in center field mm. and give them a little more power. Um, I, don't, I don't know how they're going to use him. But I, I thought it was an intriguing trade and, and, and a good deal for uh, for Brody Van Wagenen to make. Um, they also traded Kevin Ploiecki, one of their one of their ac- excess backup catchers, to the Indians for a pair of minor leaguers. I did some research, brother. Kevin Ploiecki in 2012 was the Big Ten Player of the Year while playing for Purdue. The Mets picked him 35th overall in the draft. Right. He's a bust. He batted 201 last year. This this guy's supposed to be the Big Ten Player of the Year. Are you kidding me? Well, it happens, brother. So he's gone. 78 games last year, 64 starts, 201, seven home runs, 30 RBIs, which is a career high. So We're almost done, brother. we got to remind everyone, don't forget about Polka Beat. Every Monday tonight at 8 p.m., Polka Bob, New York's, New York's Polka Bob, features all styles of polka music and additional music of Ukrainian and Polish influence, as well as news of the Polish community. That's Polka Beat every Monday tonight, 8 p.m., right here on 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. Uh, one more thing about the Islanders, brother. We've got about a minute here. Um, Islanders, six straight wins, nine of their last ten, and they're somehow they're still in fourth place. That's incredible. But they're only two points out of first place. It's, a, it's the Metropolitan Division. It's going to be the, the, the roller coaster ride of the NHL. They're doing very well, though, the Islanders. Two gotta, things I like want to mention just before we end. Yes, brother. Um, according to Newsday, they've been tracking the attendance at the NYCB Live Nas, Nas, Nassau Community not Nassau Community College, Nassau Coliseum. Yes, Literally every game so far at the Coliseum has been a sol- sellout. Sellout, of course. Except for the last game, which was 500 people under the sellout. They are drawing more people at the Coliseum than they are at the Barclays. And sellout. playing better. They're winning games. And they're winning better. Also, uh, the resale tickets are doing much better in resale. Uh, that's not good. That's not good for us. That's not good for <laughs> us at all. I, I agree. That's not uh, good. But it's doing better at the Coliseum than it is at Barclays. So if you want to get a... You know, go get some tickets that are cheap. Go to the Barclays Center. But who the hell wants to go to the, wow. the Barclays Center? And quickly, brother, tonight, Clemson and Alabama, the national championship, that's going to be on eight different ESPNs. Seriously? Seriously. They're going to have, very, they have very, various various sundry items you can find on any ESPN channel there is, except the Ocho, of course, because it doesn't exist. 
Wow, that's, and, that's uh, incredible. And what? Carabao Cup semifinals tomorrow. Tottenham against Chelsea. So they're going to have like different camera angles for each channel? Not different camera angles, but different uh, different stats, different... Uh, different like You can hear an Alabama broadcast or, oh, okay. or a Clemson broadcast. Okay. They, I, I saw the list. It was ridiculous you how know many what? different that's, stat channels. That, that, is the, that is the future. I bet Crazy. the Super Bowl does this in a couple of years. They should. They should have done it already. They do. Why, they, why is college doing something that the NFL isn't doing? They're doing. They do it on uh, the uh, NCAA's too. TNT will have the home announcers, and then TBS, and then uh, right. True Television. Yeah, that's, or whatever. What that's what I'm saying. So that's not a bad thing, actually. No. So you know, that's something that you know, a little bit ahead of the thing. I, I I might actually watch the game. I you should. I might. I don't know. The college football guy should say St. John's beat Georgetown this past Saturday. How about that? Um, college basketball might actually be. Something to watch in the New York area this year. Chris Mullins getting it done. He's we got to get him done. on. We got to get him on. Tape. And you know what? Georgetown, on, Chris Mullins, Georgetown should have won the game. They should have. And uh, you know, Patrick pa- Ewing. Pa- Patrick uh, not getting the job done. Well, he is and he isn't. You know, the, he, I think Patrick. You know what they said? The um, the sideline announcer said uh, Patrick Ewing told his players, uh, "Go to the go to the glass because if you go to the glass, you're going to win." <laughs> and meanwhile, after that, Georgetown stopped doing it, That's and then they coaching. lost. That's not coaching. Well, it is if, if if it's true because when they did go to the glass, they would score. Anyway, you're, you're listening to From the Press Box. That just about does it. My name yes. is Rob Leonard. Joining me, of course, as always, is my brother Tim, award-winning sports writer Tim Leonard. Tim, you're at Twitter at? At Real Tim Leonard. And we'll see you next Monday with more From the Press Box. Take care. Stay tuned to Big Ed and the Good Gold Show. You're listening to the station that's been nominated for a total of 11 awards with the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System, including Best Community College Station for two years in a row. FM. HD. Amazon Echo. Google Home. The TuneIn Radio app. The iHeartRadio app. And nccradio.org. This, this is 9.3 WHPC. WHPC. WHPC HD. Garden City. Long Island. New York.